So this will be um, our opening event, and we will have a closing event of this course on the 9th of March, where we will discuss the contents, outcomes, uh, hypotheses, and questions uh, uh, and strategic considerations that we come up with through this course, which is 35 groups from lots of different places coming together to discuss different tools and tactics. Um, anybody who didn't uh, join the course because you weren't part of a group or whatever, um, as you know, you can email us to get some of the course materials. And please, please join us on the 9th of March for the final event. Um, I'm Manuela from Common Ecologies. I'm co-facilitating the course um, with a bunch of other amazing people that you will also see and hear today, possibly. Um, I'm quickly just going to mention what Common Ecologies is. Um, we're a platform for shared learning, encounters, and strategizing across movements, ecological, climate, feminist, housing, anti-racist, uh, and other movements. And we try and um, facilitate spaces for exchange and also organize in-person encounters sometime. sometimes. Um, we're very excited to be here and um, to have this uh, first uh, public event with you all, which will be brief and dense, but uh, also very rich and inspiring, I think. Um, we basically um, will learn today about um, tools and tactics, actually, um, for facilitating uh, local agroecological transitions. And um, there is, um, we're going to be hearing specifically about um, a method that some of the people speaking here have been working on for many, many years, which um, in Spanish is um, Dinamización Agroecológica Local, and which in English they have rendered as local agroecological dynamization, dynamization meaning uh, facilitation. And um, we have had the incredible uh, pleasure, privilege, and uh, honor to have budget uh, to pay Maggie Schmidt for translating um, an English text, an English book that contains all these uh, tools and tactics. I don't know if you can see me holding this little book in the screen right now. This is the Spanish version from which um, we um, took 27 pages and uh, had Maggie translate this into English. Um, one of its authors, Daniel Lopez Garcia, has um, reworked the text a little bit, updated it, uh, and we've given this text an introduction by us as Common Ecologies, and um, uh, it also has a new introduction by Daniel. Um, and this text has already been shared with uh, those of you participating in the course. For those of you who are not part of the course, um, we've just put it on our website, and um, somebody... I hope we'll share the link with you to this text in the chat. Yeah, here it is. Um, so you can click on that link in the chat and you can download the PDF. It's an amazing text. Um, and uh, in a way, we gather around this text to celebrate its translation today and um, to hear um, some specific examples. And here, um, on the one hand, Daniel Lopez Garcia, one of the authors of the text, tell us about um, local agroecological dynamization. Uh, in the broader context of the crisis that we face right now, why this is important um, as a tool for us all to engage with um, and to give us some cues for um, what, how we might do this, what sort of uh, uh, practical um, forms of work we can do with this. Um, after Daniel Lopez Garcia, we have um, Eric Hobelink from uh, the cooperative Aran de Terra in Catalonia which is a cooperative that works specifically uh, on facilitating processes of agroecological transition, tell us from their practice about uh, work they're doing, so to get a sense of how this might be applied. And um, third, we will have um, Fernando Garcia Dori from Inland, Campo Adentro, um, who published the uh, original Spanish text, tell us a little bit um, about the context in which um, this uh, book appeared and um, and and inlands um, more uh, also artistic and creative engagement with them um, local agroecological facilitation. And uh, after this, after these three presentations, which will be fifteen minutes, ten minutes, and five minutes, more or less, um, 
we will have time to gather questions, comments, and to just kind of converse with each other. So uh, if you're listening to these presentations, feel free to already type questions, comments, or also share links, whatever you like, in the chat. Um, the chat will be our kind of archive, and we will be gathering your questions and comments to then kind of um, uh, speak about them together at the end of the presentations. We're recording this event. Um, you've already seen that. Um, I would like to first up thank Maggie for being our translator, for having translated this um, amazing text in an amazing way, and for being with us throughout this course and in this event. Um, she's a very, very appreciated comrade who um, coincidentally happens to live in the same village as Daniel, the uh, co-author of the text. <laughs> so there are already some uh, nice connections that we discovered through this. And um, yeah, we are launching this publication today in a way, so feel free to share it out. Um, we will be tweeting about it as Common Ecologies. Feel free to retweet and uh, make it go around because it's a really useful tool. Um, but without much further ado, I will pass um, the talking stick on to Daniel Lopez Garcia, who I would really like to thank also for being with us and for having shared this text with us. Um, and he will share a presentation with us now. If you want to say more about yourself, Daniel, uh, the floor is yours. No, only thank you. Thanks to you, uh, Manu and Bu and Laura and all the people from, from Common Ecologies, also Maggie, that was a very nice surprise uh, to, to meet with her also online in, in this international event. Um, uh, I, I'm, I, I, I would prefer to speak in Spanish as uh, I would feel more comfortable later, perhaps in, in the discussion. Uh, yeah, I could speak in English, but I would prefer uh, once we we've got the, the 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 luxury the luxus to to have Maggie here, I will take you uh, take profit of it. Um, bueno, buenas tardes. So uh, good evening. I'm going to share my screen because we don't have a lot of time, and later we can discuss. I just wanted to say that it's a luxury and a pleasure. It's to have been able to re-edit this manual. Because in some ways, this manual that was published by Campo Dentro 10 years ago also opens up a line of work in which we've been working on a lot, as Manuel uh, mentioned. We have a lot more to tell than I can tell in this brief period of time. Each time... Uh, this The proposal from this uh, manual is, uh, I think, ever more pertinent, more relevant. What I'd like to share today are three basic ideas. The opportunity or the, the relevance of continue, continuing to work in local agroecological dynamization, or which has also been translated as facilitation. I wanted to briefly... Uh, pause for a moment to look at definitions of agroecology and local dynamization. I think I, I, I think this is going to be important throughout the course. Also, I'd like to talk about local agro, agroecological dynamization as a territorialized local strategy oriented to action. So without further ado, Food systems and food, more broadly, historically, is something that's generated social and cultural and economic wealth or richness. But as we know, uh, in recent years, it's been an increasing problem. I cite, no, you don't see the presentation, do you? No, we haven't seen it. You didn't share the screen. We just see you. I'm sorry, I wasn't sharing it. Uh, excuse me. Okay, now you can see it? You can see it now. Okay, so now it's at the... Oh. So it's, it's loading, right? Okay, now I can see it, right? Food system as a problem? Oh, 
then I see it differently. That's weird. Okay, if you find that what I'm saying has no relation to what you're seeing, then let me know, okay? So in terms of climate change, the uh, extinction of biodiversity, health problems, especially with regard to non-transmissible uh, animals, the uh, problem for workers in the entire food uh, system, or access to food, especially healthy food. The present day food system is a terrible problem. It's a very important problem. Uh, a third of emissions and a huge part of public expenses have to do with with illnesses related to food related illnesses. So why is food a problem? Well, food as Jason W. Moore talks about at the end of this, uh, these are the four cheap, the four cheaps, uh, uh, mineral resources, foods, The our post-industrial society couldn't function without cheap food. And for there to be cheap food, for supermarkets to be full of cheap food, there are very terrible environmental impacts, and I know people will be working on the uh, Mar Menor in Murcia in Spain. This is a photograph of the uh, greenhouses in Almeria, and this is a photograph from just a couple of days ago in which a uh, group, a, a community of, uh, of migrant day workers in Níjar were evicted from their uh housing because of these violent attacks. So all of these are consequences of the production of cheap food, social health and uh, environmental problems generated by this pursuit of cheap food. The present multiple crisis, multi-crisis situation of the war in the Ukraine, climate change, pandemics, etc. instead of pushing towards uh, making more sustainable decisions in food system and food productions, it's generating just the opposite. The situation of multi-crisis is using uh, the shock doctrine to step back or to repeal the already deficient environmental and social measures present in the food system in Europe and generating a whole new wave of capitalist accumulation through neoliberal uh, uh, policies that lead to the transfer of wealth to the already rich and to the very large corporations. This is based on the next generation uh, funds by the European Union, but also how large distribution and agro-industrial indust uh, companies are duplicating their uh, their profits due to the state of exception uh, generated by these overlapping crises. In this scenario, agroecology appears as a classic article from 2007 by Felipe Giraldo uh, says, it's a immaterial territory in dispute that reflects the disputes in material territories. We're talking about the control of the global system of food distribution, of prices, of who decides about the impacts that the food system will have, and also what we understand uh, as sustainable agriculture. Here are images from the FAO about agroecology that allow us to compatibilize agriculture with schemes of capitalist growth and increased accumulation. The making conditions of agriculture compatible with the use of GMO, of uh, synthetic uh, pesticides, uh, hyperintensification for the, uh, for example, the use of uh, ever more intensive uh, machinery. For me, at least, agroecology is not compatible with any of these any of these things with GMO, with intensification. It's an entirely different way of looking at reality. It's a discipline. It's a perspective. 
and an approach that proposes ideas of uh, uh, holistic uh, sustainability. Some authors have referred to it as the uh, agroecology of the whole, the ecology of the whole food system, looking at a body of uh, farming practices, but also as a social movement and a scientific uh, space of research. This is a holistic way of looking at food systems that incorporates social uh, labor and uh, social reproduction issues uh, to the production of foods made in a just way that are uh, culturally appropriate and uh, free of poisons. Agroecology is not one single uh, aspect, like, for example, reducing greenhouse gas emissions, which, of course, uh, is relevant, but it could also be a chimera. How could we, uh, what does it mean to reduce uh, greenhouse gas emission when the, it leads to an ever greater accumulation of capital? For me, agroecology has three different uh, dimensions. It has the ecological and productive uh, aspect, the socioeconomic and cultural aspect that has to do with the strengthening of local communities, how uh, traditional ecological knowledge forms a very important part of local economies and allows us to uh, construct uh, balanced transitions from a social and ecological perspective, and it also has a, a socio-political aspect. As uh, as Gonzalo de Molina Guzman says, this has to do with the distribution of wealth and of profits in uh, and how the large operators and corporations, especially agro-industry and distribution companies, pressure from above from from above forcing small-scale uh, production, uh, small-scale producers and medium-scale producers to self-exploit, uh, to over-exploit uh, the workforce and over-exploit natural resources. If this problem of over-exploitation is forced through the uh, unjust distribution of wealth through the entire food system, this unequal uh, system is reinforced by uh, political decisions and policies through the World Trade Organization, for example, the European uh, policies. This unjust distribution is a political decision, and the unsustainability of the food system is likewise a political question. It's important, it's essential to also work on the political aspect of this, uh, promoting agroecological policies as well. When we talk about the scale of agroecological trans transitions, uh, it traditionally works at a at the level of farm by farm. Increasingly, it's working at a level of territories or communities. Uh, increasingly, we work uh, through social movements and research at a local uh, sit at a local scale, looking at whole food systems, uh, looking at agroecology as an alternative to the corporate food regime. The perhaps the schema that we can propose that's most frequently used is by Stephen Gleesman, the director of the uh, review Agroecology and Sustainable Food Systems. He proposes these five different schema in which the, the last of which we're talking about change of values and change in the whole agro food system. Here, I'll start introducing local agro uh, ecological dynamization. We work in a open-ended system, looking at these aspects that Gleisman proposes, but in which different profiles of persons within the food system with different kind of motives enter at different levels within the food system. The, I hope, uh, please confirm for me that you're seeing the cycle. Yeah, we're seeing agroecological transitions as an open-ended process. Danny, so we work from this perspective that's cyclical, but it's also open-ended. 
advancing in different ways, understanding that agroecology doesn't need necessarily to lead to organic farming, but rather we work towards a greater social and ecological sustainability that will vary according to the territory and the situation. Each different context could choose its own itinerary towards transition. But the important thing is to advance in these three different dimensions. Uh, agroecology as a social movement, a set of farming pro practices, and as a scientific way of looking or uh, approach. In agroecological transition, we've worked principally historically at a farm scale, looking at the ecological and productive level. But we see that there are other challenges that slip away from that focus. They're, they go beyond that. For example, climate change or uh, the PAC in the European Union are very important conditions for any kind of uh, agroecological transition, even at a farm level. So we have to be able to articulate these different scales and dimensions in order to be able to truly promote comprehensive and holistic uh, proposals for agroecological trans transition. And this, therefore, is what we call uh, agroecological dynamization. We talk about agroecology-based local agri-food systems that combine the vertical strategies that try to uh, incorporate everything that has to do with the value chain, uh, looking at ecosystemic services, uh, bringing together also what occurs downstream when the uh, product reaches the consumer, especially those consumers with greatest need. We try to work with a great diversity of different actors present in any given territory that may or may not be directly related to the food system, but we're seeing that this ecosystem of very diverse actors is allowing us to, and facilitating the promotion of local sustainable projects within the food system, what we are calling uh, agroecological transition. So in this regard, uh, local agroecological dynamization is a practical proposal that works at a local community level, although we're also trying this in larger scale. In Spain, we're working at a provincial level uh, in various parts of the Spanish state that tries to promote food sovereignty, food sovereignty and the social reproduction of local communities at the same time as the conservation and the protection of local ecosystems and the services that those provide. And I'll close with this uh, slide. We try to promote an agroecological transition as open-ended processes that move towards greater sustainability at a social and ecological level articulating, trying to strengthen the social and cultural life of uh, territorialized communities, promoting agroecolo uh, ecological uh, organic farming, at least here in Spain, is at the same time, there's a big uh, push to co-opt agroecology, uh, for example, in the uh, PAC, uh, agroecology is understood as there's a very insi great insistence upon organic uh, at, the, at the same time as uh, claiming that uh, organic farming is the same as conventional farming, that it's fraud, that it's false. For me, I think it's uh, important to highlight that we can cultivate without uh, poisons. Uh, but I know that there's a big debate around organic farming, so we can talk about that. But looking at sustainable and agroecological cultivation can reinforce community, uh, small communities, while uh, local development initiatives have principally uh, de-peasantized uh, rural areas. In the Spanish state, we have the good luck that there are a lot of uh, communal institutions still present. That is to say, they're not public. That is to say that they're not uh, part of the state, uh, but rather communal. And they are a very important element to promote uh, agroecological transitions. These uh, And these transitions are often linked to these communal or the commons uh, 
institutions of the commons, traditional ones. We also try to look at agri-food production as a lever for rural economies. There's a lot to talk about with regards to uh, participation. It's a word that's been sort of overhandled. But the idea is that these are processes in which we take a territorial perspective and try to sit down at a table with very different people, very different interests, in order to generate new questions that allow us to seek uh, allow the people themselves to seek new answers to their own problems and issues. And uh, this is a way of uh, looking at our shared realities. Uh, this is a sort of based in popular education from a Paulo Freire kind of perspective that in order to open up new open-ended transition processes uh, within a given territory. I hope I didn't overstep my time too much uh, and that we'll be able to continue uh, talking after the presentation. Thank you so much. There's something happening somewhere. Somebody has their mic on. Who is it? <laughs> okay, I think now. <laughs> Thank you very much, Danny. Um, yeah, a lot to connect to. Please, everybody, if you already have comments or thoughts or questions, put them in the chat and we'll collect them. Um, so feel very free to share with us already in the chat. Um, I would now pass uh, on to Eric Hobeling from Arande Terra. You can obviously introduce yourself uh, more, Eric. Um, who will give us some really, really practice-based insights into local agroecological dynamization. Thank you for being with us, Eric. Thank you, Manu, and thank you, Dani, for your words. Uh, let me see if I can uh, share my screen. Um, there you go. Do you see my screen? Yes. Okay. So, um, yes, my name is Eric. It's a great pleasure to be here in name of all around the Terra with all these great speakers and this great course. And uh, I will be talking about the project Alimentem Colcerola, which is um, a project uh, to promote agroecological transition in, the, in Colcerola. Uh, we, as around the Terra, also work in, in other projects in the, in the territory of Catalonia. Uh, but I will speak about this uh, specific project in Colcerola. Colcerola is a natural park which is located just north from Barcelona. It's a 8,000 hectare uh, natural park, which has which is surrounded by Barcelona, by but also um, by other heavily uh, and densely populated areas. So uh, this poses a lot of, of challenge, challenges uh, because we have lots of visitors and, and lots of activity, uh, but also great opportunities because we are really connected with uh, the city, which is also one of the challenges in the agroecological transition. So um, often Colcerola is seen as a bit of a, a garden of the city, this place to go a biking, walking or taking your dog. Uh, but uh, from the perspective of agroecology, we see very important uh, the paper of agriculture and livestock farming. Um, in fact, uh, uh, Colcerola has been a place um, full of agriculture in 1956. We had 21% of um, of all these 8,000 hectares uh, with um, mainly vineyards, but uh, a wide diversity of, of agriculture and livestock. And in uh, 2018, we have 6% of this territory uh, occupied by agriculture, with, uh, with which means a 72% decrease in, in land, in agriculture land in Colcerola, due uh, mainly to all these challenges that um, that uh, Danny was explaining for uh, medium and small producers. So the reality right now is we have like 30 or something agricultural and livestock, livestock uh, farming initiatives in a, what we like to say mountain agriculture, which is uh, not plain, it's super hilly and it's quite difficult to grow in here. But we have like the, 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 the good thing we have is that we are, uh, it's a, 
it has a high ecological value and high uh, quality products, but also it's really connected to the city, which means it's uh, quite easy in some part to um, connect it um, with uh, in the mar marketing perspective with short marketing circuits and um, they are almost everyone uh, is producing in uh, in an organic uh, practice not everyone is certified but most of them um, most of them are um, and there's a beautiful mix between traditional producers and newcomers and new farmers. The average age of uh, our producers is seven, 37 years, which is quite young considering the average in other territor territories, at least in Spain. This is an uh, image that uh, for me represents uh, this mixture. And these are the products that we have, uh, great diversity, uh, wine, we have bees, uh, we have uh, uh, fruits, uh, we have shrooms, uh, etc. Lots of diversity and quality. So the main objective when we arrived in Colcerola as a Ronde Terra, we were contracted from the natural park and the main objective was to promote a fairer and more sustainable local food system in Colcerola and for this, um, we wanted to promote economic, ecological, and social sustainability of the projects that already were in Colcerola, but also facilitate the incorporation of new projects. All these trying to um, to be in line with all these in line with the uh, agroecological and food sovereignty principles. So um, we have been here from 2016 till now. And we like to speak about the whole this process between two cycles, and I cannot go very deep uh, in them, but very briefly, in 2016, we entered with a technical diagnosis, which was conducted by the technical team. And then we opened the process uh, to the participation of uh, social movements, farmers, and public administrations, uh, doing a, a participatory diagnosis and trying to um, uh, bring a consensus about an action plan in order to uh, transition to uh, um, uh, to make these transitions towards agroecology. The second cycle has been more about implementing all these actions that I will be talking about now. So the way we organize, it's a bit complex, so I don't want to go very deep on it. I just want to say uh, that we as a technical team, that we are somewhere here in the middle, are responsible of um, coordinating on one part um, a big meeting or group which, are, which is formed by farmers and another big group which is uh, formed by public administrations and uh, social movements. Uh, um, sometimes we separate, separate them, but uh, nowadays they are, they are together. All of them, or all of us, we meet together in a great annual meeting, but as a technical team are always like transpassing information from one part to the other and, and making conclusions in order to um, uh, advance in, in, in several actions that you have in the left of this diagram, which I will explain further now. These are some images of our participatory process with social movements and, and civil society, farmers, so the main results or the main things that we have achieved uh, very quickly, I want uh, there are several, but I will talk about two, which is Arrelat and Colcerola Agrarian Contract. Arrelat is a, a, a support service for farmers that they get for free, and Colcerola, Colcerola Agrarian Contract is a payment for farmers for all their ecosystemic services. So Arrelat is basically <clears throat> a point where uh, each farmer of Colcerola can reach to us to ask uh, for assessment in any of these topics that you are uh, you have uh, in front in the presentation. And it's not about us uh, solving everything, it's more about us connecting, um, well, solving what things that we can, but also connecting with people that can um, assess in this uh, topic. Usually what happens is uh, when, when, when there is not this service is that the farmer has to reach one place, the other place, and it's a bit of a chaos and, and lots of bureaucracy. And we kind of facilitate this process uh, in like a unique window, which is us that connects to, to other places. And in the second um, place, I wanted to talk about the Colcerola Agrarian Contract, which is, it is this remuneration to small and medium-sized producers in Colcerola 
for all the benefits that um, that they provide, which uh, um, uh, Danny was talking about, because one of the big challenges uh, in Colcelon, and I would say in general, is economic viability. You have to imagine these 30 projects with some, most of them are, are, are starting, and they do have uh, lots of knowledge and good practices and good inten intention, but uh, they usually lack of investment capacity. They don't have the money to, 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 to build the infrastructure that they need. Um, so what we did was a participatory design with the farmers and with the public administrations in order to design this uh, cultural agrarian contract, which right now is um, granting 5,000 euro per initiative each year based on some agro uh, agroecological practices and, and food sovereignty principles that they, that they are doing in their, in their, in their place. And much more, I just wanted to talk about uh, some processes that have been happening with this local agroecological facilitation that we were in. One of them that we that we are very proud of, but it's not our responsibility, but happened, was called Cerola Pagesa, which is an association of farmers, 15 farmers, that now have their um, own voice as an association. You have to imagine before they were all disconnected. They didn't know each other. They didn't have like this uh, uh, lobbying capacity that now uh, they have. We also do lots of events and communication trying to promote local products. You have some images here of a big event that we do um, each year promoting all these products. And one of the products that we uh, always promote is the Mando Tomato, which is a local variety um, that now it's like the superstar um, product that everyone in Barcelona wants and, and everything. We also try to facilitate access to land, connecting um, um, people that is looking for land and people who is uh, and proprietaries that have land, which is a very complex uh, uh, process and we do what we can. And also finding new commercialization opportunities um, for example, uh, connecting farmers with um, with restaurants, uh, with public schools, and and other opportunities that that are hard to get uh, for them. And we like kind of are in the middle connecting uh, all this stuff. And I wanted to end with um, the main challenges that maybe we can discuss later on. But I think it's interesting to to introduce them. One of the main ones is, is um, the demands um, in the case of producers for assessment and, and, and ideas uh, in relation of our capacity to uh, operate uh, to, to, to make them uh, real to, 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 uh, because we are a team of three, four persons and there's lots of work to do and the challenge is very big. It's not about it's not only about Colcerola, it's bigger than Colcerola, right? Uh, another one is the short term results versus deep transformation, Danny was talking about all this deep transformation that is needed to, um, for local agroecological uh, transition. And it's uh, sometimes it's deep to to uh, to reach them uh, because um, uh, mainly public administration all, always want short term results. Um, public administration also have the problem of thinking uh, um, more than their boundaries of municipality and have a real political commitment that goes year on year on year apart from the uh, parties. It's also difficult to transmit all the information to all actors, as you uh, you have already seen that the actors are very different between them and 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 it's not easy to uh, to talk the same language to give the information to everybody it's it's sometimes it's difficult and uh, also finding structural funding uh, um, often funding uh, comes uh, in little pieces or just like uh, uh, a, a pilot test or something and we are trying to achieve structural changes right and at, at least but not last, which is the process that we are uh, right now, it's uh, the handover of leadership. Uh, once this is done in 2024, the idea is that we uh, end up this, this, this process and uh, the social movements and farmers like Colcerola Pagesa with this association take on the lead of all these actions that we have been um, coordinating and, and themselves uh, try to lobby for them. Um, so this is all. I leave uh, also the um, the contact here if you want some information. I think I am on time, and I hope we can keep talking in the discussion. Thank you. Thank you so much, Eric. Clap, clap, clap. Uh, 
thanks for um, leaving these tomatoes with us. I would guess that uh, the same that I wrote in the chat um, about Danny's presentation applies to Eric's, that you can probably get the PDF of this presentation if you really want. Then yes, um, drop us an email to uh, info at communicologies.net um, or obviously write Eric directly since you have the email there. Thanks very much. Amazing to hear about this uh, very, very dense uh, work and to go a bit in depth with it. Um, uh, we're kind of trying to cover so many different levels with this event, no? because uh, from what I understand, local agroecological dy dynamization, there is all this research part of it. And it's also very much about the co-research or kind of situated co-research practice. But then there is work like you are doing in a cooperative, which is kind of a professional and like super sustained and um you know extremely uh, dense and well informed um but then uh, this this book here and the text that we translate in a way also allows anybody to pick up uh, this practice or try an experiment and start thinking about how to do a, a, to kind of facilitate some sort of agroecological process locally so it's really exciting that this is something that can go across all these levels of complexity and I think Fernando Garcia Dori from Inland um, has yet another level in a way to tell us about. Um, I hope I'm not going to uh, misrepresent you, but um, he's part of Inland, which is an incredible project and network of lots of different initiatives that also experiment uh, in also artistic ways um, with different ways of facilitating agroecological change. Um, so we'll also hear about this perspective now, which I'm very excited about. So thanks very much for being with us, Fernando. Thank you, thank you, Manu, and common ecologists for taking this important step. I think it's very important that this rich diversity of groups all around Europe and the world come together and look at the the bridges between theory and praxis. And I think this is maybe the back and forth that you were mentioning, no? From from reading the book and thinking on the tools to apply them at local level, as Eric was saying, or at many other different levels, no? In the scale. Mm. To publish the book for us was like an opportunity, and it's also the result of many years of sharing dreams and struggles with uh, Danny, uh, uh, people like Guillem as well, and and uh, being part of many movements for many years. And uh, I think that what I would like to share with you is just a little bit of a reflection. I don't know if you can. Now you're muted, uh, Fernando. Uh, can you hear me now? But we can't okay. ah, yes, now that the presentation is coming. Right. Is it? Um, we don't have it full screen. If we should. Okay. Yes, mm -hmm. a second. Mm -hmm. So, um, so what I was saying is that um, something that in England we have been testing is also to. Is it now better or not really? No? Okay. Now I think maybe. if you hit play, then yeah, yes. there we go. Thank you. It's just to consider that in agroecology, it's not just um, a question of thinking on the biophysical uh, grounds for the sub sub survival of our species and many other species on Earth, and only economical and political processes. If we consider in this uh, diagram how nature affects uh, the population through the experience and how the representation of, of that experience of nature through culture will program the way in which through labor we will uh, transform the environment, then it's crucial to look at how we culturally can reprogram the way in which we see ourselves in the planet, the way in which we, we conceive, conceive all the all the concepts of, of, of eternal growth, production, our status, and many other questions no, that are directly related with, with, the, with the main questions. And if we look at for example, how agroecology has considered culture, there is this very interesting quote by Enrique Leff, who said, sustainability cannot come uh, from a paradigm, paradigm based on economy, but on culture, different values, different forms of naming nature. So the recreation of communities and identities are negentropic principles that activate cultural creativity. So what I mean is like uh, the question of the empowerment of indigenous and peasant cultures are the ground base for any agroecological process, as we saw, for example, in the in the example that Eric was sharing. Um, I think that the, 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 the main thing is to question as well the role of the, of the artist, the designer, the creative worker, if you like, as part of a mixed 
uh, agroecology dynamization teams. And in that sense, the designer would be a connector and facilitator, a quality producer, a visualizer, a feature builder, a promoter, a new business model. This is quoting uh, a very interesting Congress that the Polytechnic University of Milano had years ago, in which they were risking the role of the designer, not just making new objects to, to, to enhance uh, Con consumption, but also to rethink the whole role of that creative investment. And for us in England, it's also important to think on on on, on those these three quotes. No? For example, by Erne Aoria, who was director of the National Museum. We don't want you to demonstrate to you the oldness and the value of the past. No, it's only also to show the how spiritually poor we are compared with our ancestors, and that we have to be alerted of the riches we inherited. No? So. This is something that I think is important as well, that I mentioned of a, of a non-material or transcendent dimension. So Inland started by creating a platform in which we managed to put together the Ministry of Environment, the Ministry of Culture, social movements like Plataforma Rural Estatal, uh, of which we were part of, and Via Campesina, universities, and then art centers and art spaces. And we developed a system in which we tried to combine the production of knowledge with training and the production of a farm art and craft production uh, to create an economy for the economical support of access to land. So just to, to, to give you an example, well, where I am now is in the inland village. We are producing here cheese, but we also produce books. <laughs> well, we worked uh, at the beginning in 22 villages all around the country. So the idea is that we kind of combine these agricultural productions and then uh, create a sort of a field of practice and reflection that builds a critical mass uh, for the people who want to move to the countryside, not to think that the countryside is just barren land in terms of cultural production, but actually a vibrant place. So in some way, that's what we are trying as well with the Shepherd School that we started in, in the mountains here in the north of Spain, where I am. Uh, it's a project that puts together young people interested on farming, you know, on shepherding, with veteran shepherds, uh, and, and the project has been evolving in these years, but it also has a cultural dimension. No? So like we're thinking, for example, the the, 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 the cabin, the shepherd built uh, in habits. Now we are working with uh, designers to rethink the cabin, uh, the huts, also the the, the, the the whole process of of learning and telling about this form of life. So in this way, Inland is working in three spaces, in the city, in the countryside, and in Mallorca as well. The countryside is the village in the north of Spain, in Madrid the space. And then we project ourselves both in the art world and in the pastoralist movement. And um, just to tell you a little bit more about Inland, it started by creating that platform of meet, for meeting cultural producers, farmers, and policy makers. And they started to propose, uh, for example, to work in the villages with other perspectives. No? Uh, in that sense, after the the, the International Symposium, for example, some of the 22 projects looked at the heritage of working with the with the animals in the village, in this case, rebuilding an old stable in Andalusia. And this project was called the Little Museum of the Commons. So the Little Museum of the Commons put in value the role of the last shepherd of the village. These are the drawings of the last shepherd of the village. And then we're thinking as well, the microarchitecture of this place and the heritage of the commons. This is some moments of uh, opening the space. We also work with, for example, with sound, making sound maps of um, of the of the of the of the place of the village the, that is part of an agroecological process. And in this case, for example, with the artists, we were redesigning a Sunday's market stall for Carricola, Valencia, a village very interesting from the point of view of agroecology, because they all moved to agroecological production in the 80s. And, the, and this was the proposal for an artistic, let's say, stall that was later presented in uh, in, a, in an art museum in Madrid with the museum directors. And in that way, trying to change as well the cultural capital of the countryside. So it means that it's worth enough to pay attention to it. Presently, we are shepherding in the park of Madrid, and this is the stable we redesigned for Casa de Campo. And uh, it's a space not only for hosting the sheep, but also to, to work with uh, the families and different forms. And we brought the mobile unit of urban shepherding that is also a radio studio. So we produce podcasts and sound pieces. And this is the village where we work as well with uh, multidisciplinary teams. Just to give you an example, uh, for example, here we see a designer, an artist, an architect, a sociologist, and the shepherd. 
And then we look at in the units of analysis, how a forest, how a village, how a mountain would be seen, not only from the point of view of a sociologist, an agronomist, but also an artist. And I think this is important because otherwise, if we work only on the agro agronomic agricultural part, we lack the capacity to 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 move, not to to mobilize, to to trigger uh, emotions as well, and not just you no know, work at a technical level. So that's what we try when we try to connect as well with the heritage of cultural expressions in the countryside, the figure of the mask and the other mythical aspects that will connect us with the seasons, with the cycles, with the other and with the place we inhabit. Uh, we've been working as well with the uh, life arts, like expanded landscape forms, so performance, um, body expression. Okay, three minutes. And this is the space uh, in Madrid. We have an artist residency and we host a program of different activities. For example, producing, I don't know, from a wallpaper in spite of the, the, the stable and the sheep you saw before that is going to, to just uh, be part of the sort of living sculpture that is the house to the different products we make from the cheese or the beer and the, and the presentations in our space and connecting like a window for the citizens. Uh, the book you are translating and we hope to publish in paper. It's part of uh, different editions we are making in England. And uh, and we are now developing as well the Inland Academy. I'm very happy that some members of Inland Academy uh, Year One are at attending this workshop. And we will still keep working on the question of sonic anthropology of the rural decline uh, with the question of the podcasts. Uh, the Confederacy of Villages to connect with different projects all around Europe that combine art and agroecology, and then rethinking as well, like taking a forest as a case to rethink a new commons and the politics of rewilding uh, from different perspectives, from the from the, the agro-silvopastoral redesign of the eucalyptus forest, a monoculture of eucalyptus, to redesigning a, a sauna that is also a distillation unit to distill the, the eucalyptus and heal the mountain somehow. Well, I will leave it here. Hope it was at least a little bit uh, um, uh, intriguing for you. And, uh, and there are chances to discuss as well on this dimension that is not just the, as I said, the sustainably, uh, environmentally sustainable, economically feasible, and socially fair. So vibrant is what we need maybe in our agroecological projects. Thanks a lot. <clears throat> Uh, one breath for Maggie, <laughs> a, a half second of silence for our amazing interpreter, um, so she can have a sip of water. Thank you so much, Fernando. That was really beautiful. We also had some uh, comments in the chat that it was wonderful to see these images. Um, your mention of negentropy caused an interesting discussion in the chat. It seems like a <laughs> complex term. Um, and um, I just wanted to mention that Fernando um, will also be in our course session on the 22nd of February. Um, uh, so talking more about, uh, so he will talk more about what they do with inland and about this approach to kind of local agroecological dynamization. So anybody interested in going in depth with, with that um, in the course, we will have a session on that. And if you're not in the course, we will still document um, this session. So somehow find a way to get this to you. Um, yeah, I think it's been uh, amazingly complex. Please, everybody, um, pop your questions and comments into the chat. We already have some. I will give you a few minutes to think and um, put comments into the chat while I just um, do a little bit more of promotion for this text that we've translated, um, which obviously also exists um, in Spanish in this book form um, and as a PDF. I've posted a link to a PDF um, that Daniel has also co-authored up there in the chat in Spanish. Um, uh, and it's what I really like about this uh, text is that it speaks to people who want to try out on some kind of facilitation practice, whether they're in the countryside or in the city. It's not only addressed to food producers, but it's also um, the, the text also speaks to people who want to get engaged with food networks, also in cities and so on. Um, and it kind of um, just to give you a few kind of uh, sections that the text speaks about to get really concrete, it thinks about or it gives kind of advice and ideas about how can we form a group for local agroecological facilitation? Or how can we do basic research in a territory? Or 
who can we work with? Um, you know, from farm workers to farmers to local communities, NGOs, local institutions and politicians, and so on, uh, to questions like how do we organize participation or in which sectors can we work? So um, if you look into the PDF, uh, it's really rich like that. It gets very concrete. I um, just wanted to mention that. Um, uh, let's um, I'll maybe pass over to Laura now, who has been gathering the questions. Um, keep Keep them coming. And we'll have a first round of them. Yes, over to you. You can unpin me. Yes. Uh, thank you. Thank you to all the presenters. It was super insightful to listen to your presentations. Um, so we gather some questions from the chat. And there's a general one, I would, I would say. Uh, the first one is, how to engage with conventional farmers that are suspicious um, to sustainable or agroecological farming practices. I think that this um, question is, uh, can be addressed by all of our um, speakers. Um, and there's also one directed to Eric, uh, I would uh, say that it's related to the funding. How was the funding of the process um, as well as the economic uh, ecosystemic services payment? There was this very direct uh, yeah, inquiry. Maybe just go in whatever order you want. I just want to say, Fernando, I cannot uh, spotlight you because your video is off, it seems. Um, but if when you come back, I will... Um... Yes, so we can see all of you. Thank you. Oh, yeah, I, I just wanted to answer the, the direct one and just say that to the first one, um, how to engage with conventional farmers. In the case of cultural law, we had the tremendous luck, I would say, or a reality that we did not really engage with conventional farmers because there were none. Um, most of them um, um, are organic or do have an organic uh, way of uh, of functioning. So in our case, specifically in, in Colcirola, um, we didn't really engage with them. But ob obviously, there were uh, there are still lots of debate on. Um, not only on the practices, but also in the ideas um, um, that farmers want want to conventionalize or, or think about other ideas. Um, but I'm sure uh, Dani or Fernando can answer this. I will answer the part of the funding. The funding we receive is part, uh, so the Natural Park is a consortium uh, built by eight different municipalities, which are the municipalities that are, that, uh, are inside of the park of Colcerola. And these are the municipalities that um, uh, fund uh, the whole project of Alimentem Colcerola, which is funded, funded approximately with uh, 30,000 euros each year on average, um, which is, in my personal opinion, not a lot of uh, funding for the whole work that we do, but, uh, but it's uh, something. Also, um, we try to get funding from, for other subsidies or try to facilitate connection uh, from the local farmers to, lo uh, to public subsidies, and we try to, to make this, this connection. But as I said in the presentation, it's also it's always a, a challenge, this thing about the funding, because the typical thing that happens is that funding uh, arrives just for one thing or for one year or for one topic. And I think our challenge is or our intention or the agroecological transition idea is to, to get structural things happening, not just uh, one pilot test or one uh, or one thing. Right. That's that's the answer about funding. Yeah, I, I, I could. Thanks, Eric. I could answer to the first uh, question. Uh, for me, is yeah, people and also farmers. Um, they always we always uh, need something. We always express some pain. Something we can. Uh, we, we need to, to develop or something we need to face. And for me, the, the, the first secret is, as Zapatista, as Zapatista said, just begin 
Just, uh, just listening, uh, just listen people, just ask the people what, what do they think when, what are they, their ideas and not beginning with the prey, uh, previously uh, made idea on what they need and they, you, you just need agroecology and this is your solution. No, people need many things and for for me the, the transition is, is the you know, participatory process as I said before is a, an art of constructing a, a path towards sustain, sustainability in which many different people and interests uh, with complex interactions, we find common ways to 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 go farther, not to advance towards sustainability. And so, yeah, it's just to to ask and not to have previously, uh, yeah, specific or really uh, close ideas on on where to go to. Um, and the, for me, it's very important also that we don't say, yeah, pe people usually, conventional farmers, they don't like to hear about organic farming. They, they think you are going to lie them, you're, this is false. There's a lot of ideas and previous ideas against um, sustainability, against uh, environmentalist movements, against the city. Uh, it's like for, for, yeah, for, especially for right, wing discourses in rural uh, communities or in the countryside, at least in Spain, they are constructing uh, an opposition between farmers and the city, farmers and environmentalists, farmers and uh, foreigners, for example, land workers. Uh, and yeah, I, I think we have to 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 manage it, uh, trying not to 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 go uh, in front of their previous ideas, but trying to find also both material and immaterial sp uh, spaces in which we all uh, yeah, can find our, our, our path to, to, to advance towards a shared um, yeah, sustainability, shared way to be together in our common territory. I think I'm not being too clear, but then for me, perhaps the secret would be only just ask and listen people what they need, and and then try to find common interests and needs, and they are they, they are always there. Mm, this is what I love so much about the text that you talk so much about listening, and um, yeah, uh, this is a very nice thing that um, is, is there. Um, so. Um, we had one more written question, right, uh, Laura and Lea? And um, meanwhile, Bu and I thought we could also invite people to speak their questions out loud because we don't have 200 queuing up. And it is nice to hear voices. So maybe if Jose, Jose yeah. wants to also just say the question, you could do that, Jose, Jose, or, um, or we read it out. Yeah, thanks. Um, um, yeah, so my question is uh, also to to everybody, and and it's related to to what are the skills that are and maybe maybe Daniel was already talking about it, but what are the skills needed in order to to arrive and and kind of dialogue and start dialogue and and create engagement with communities in order to facilitate participatory processes. Uh, this be, is being asked, um, considering that now nowadays the formal institutions, education institutions, doesn't consider too much uh, these skills from my perspective. They are more into kind of promoting individualistic ways of production that go against what we have been discussing. So I, I would like to know about the your opinion about this. Thanks. Should we add another question? Should we collect a few? Is somebody else? Does somebody else want to go maybe or? Uh, Rita, is that a question you want to ask out loud or? Or a comment? 
Yeah, it's just uh, hello everyone. It's just um, that Eric did not answer the part of the ecosystem services. So how uh, how the funding is 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 brought up to fund the ecosystem services to the farmers? Okay. Um, if you want to ask a question, you can keep going with the chat, or if not, raise your hand or leave a note in the chat. Um, maybe I can add one more question to this, and then we pass it on to you again. I was just wondering um, a little bit in relation to what you said about the cooptation of agroecology, um, Daniel, in your presentation. And um, since uh, I've read or kind of seen that in France, they've now um, titled one of their ministries as the Ministry for Agroecology, and there's a lot of power shifts and financial moves happening, obviously also with the Ukraine war of, of land grabs and things that are being, you know, branded as a, you know, good for good for ecology and uh, greenwashed. Um, and, and so, you know, ag agriculture being a very disputed field where there's a lot of different financial and power interests. So I just wanted to ask if, if like, for instance, with the French example, what your sense is of that, if you know, I know maybe we also have some French people uh, in the audience that want to respond to that, but um, I'd love to hear a bit more about that and how you relate to that in terms of uh, what does that mean in terms of um, doing research or being an activist around agroecology? Uh -huh. And here's another question. Um, Laura, Lea, do you want to read it out, maybe? And then we go over to answer. Yeah. Um, Alex maybe wants to say it, or I can just read it. It's... Um, if, if you can hear me, I'll, I'll say it. Um, I think I might have made up a word in there, but sort of related to what's been being said, do you, do you see any risk of cooptation in uh, relationships with public bodies and, and funding coming from them and um, sort of developing a role as a source of artisan food within uh, a general capitalist economy? Um, sort of, yeah, what do you see as the next steps that local uh, local transition? can play within a full transition. Okay, jump in and answer maybe. And if there are more questions, keep them coming. Should I begin? Yeah, thanks very much. On cooptation, <clears throat> this is a really important issue in agroecology, both in, in, in the global agroecology and food sovereignty movements and, and also in, in agroecological research. Um, yeah, I think agroecology was initially a really a marginal approach to um, agricultural sustainability, but uh, in the last years uh, has been taken as a way to maintain uh, intensification, capital, in energy, uh, investment, intensification and extensification, for example, of labor uh, and knowledge at the same time. And agroecology has been taken to promote this as agroecology as something which is not really defined or not uh, or where the most um, grassroots um, transformative agroecology has not the communicative power to say what's agroecology and what's not. There are some people and especially FAO uh, uh, who has said agroecology is compatible with everything. And let's stop talking on organic farming. This is something we can talk about. No? Let's talk on organic farming, which is legally recognized and it's too tough for us. And let's talk on agroecology, we see, which is completely open. And so the uh, governments as France, uh, as the French government that adopted agroecology as the main poly policy uh, for uh, for agriculture a few years ago, uh, some perhaps 10 years ago, I, I don't remember, in 2014, or it, it's not new, uh, 
they they could keep on doing almost the same, introducing some yeah the, the funding for some uh, farming practices which are more inter more, more sustainable and this but, but promoting uh, intensification and growth which is the, the the focus of the european common common agricultural policy and the the the, the core center of of all policies of all european state members all, also global north countries no and so um yeah agroecology is suitable for this it has been done suitable uh, for this the structure in france i think is similar also than i don't know if there's some people here from brazil uh, because brazil has been the main experiment on a uh, wide scale uh, uh, agroecological policies if you remember the first government of lula da silva uh, began with a new minister the minister for agricultural development which began to work beside the minister of agriculture the minister of agriculture promotes intensification uh, export uh, agriculture and um, in intensification amazon deforestation but the minister of uh, uh, agricultural development support agroecology family farming local markets with a very little amount of the budget for agriculture this is the same for example in france but in france the rhetorics that the discourse is agroecological uh, and, but they maintain the main policies to promote intensification exports dumping to uh, to africa and and whatever um, so for me we are in the agroecological movements we are very worried on cooptation but cooptation is not a risk of, from the future it's already here it's like gravity it's always going to be here and so for me is the problem is not to discuss uh, if we are co-opted or not is what are we going to do when they are going to co-opt us and they are doing and so for me this question of are we um what's happening with public funding if well, uh, as as we are talking on on if it's good or bad public funding for agroecology or not the main budget for um, the, the crisis funds in Europe, the next generation funds, is going to be firmas and to, to support and transfer big amounts of money for the main industries and, and, and enterprises. So I think there's not a contradiction between local transitions and global transitions. We, we need to work in both sides and Avia Campesina knows it better. We need to develop our ecological transitions in the local scale, and we need to fight at the global scale, grassroots, grassroots and bottom up. But we also need policies top, which are necessary to be done uh, top down, but we need strong movements to, to take care of these policies which are necessarily top down are made for the people, for sustainability, for local communities, for agroecology, for food sovereignty. But we need to be organized at that global level. Um, well, there's much more to, to say, but I think our skills of uh, or fa facilitation is just to know um, which are my skills and take advantage of it. Uh, whoever can do facilitation, but you need to know which are your skills and which are not, because people can see you. I mean, for me, it's, it's, it's better to talk with farmers when they see that you know how to farm. And I'm not, I don't need a community small garden in the city. No, no. When you know how to produce uh, food and you know what happens to, when you try to sell to, to live from, from um, yeah, from farming. No? And this is very important to have pra practical skills or, or if you don't have this, just to be uh, to have some humility to recognize this and and to to relate with people yeah with humility uh, yeah yes agroecology for me is a transdisciplinary approach and and multi pluri epistemological approach as much as you know I mean if you know something on uh, participatory or qualitative social research you know on organic farming you know agronomy much as you know is better like if you don't know everything uh, just take advantage and be be uh, 
be clear on what you know and what you don't and that you want to work together. This is my, these are my skills and I want to share it with you. And these are my, my interests also. I have to be honest. These are my interests. And I, I, I don't share some interests with you, but some of, some of them, I, I do share it. Let's do something together. Great. Thank you, Daniel. Mm, there is another question uh, here in the chat, but maybe, I don't know uh, if uh, Fernando or Eric wants to um, react to this, this uh, round of questions before. Because I think that is very interesting, uh, the topic that Pietro is, um, is bringing. Um, Pietro, do you want to speak uh, loud or should we read it, your question? I was a bit puzzled by uh, because of how the dynamization was framed. So because on the one hand, I think of facilitation as a also rather technical uh, as a facilitation as a te as technique because it's been also deepened and studied and uh, experimented with uh, increasingly, you know, and like recognize it, its importance and superiority to non-facilitated uh, organization is somehow also recognized, no? so kind of elevated to a technical uh, uh, sphere that is not of, of and increasingly facilitation is being done by experts in facilitation, in fact. Um, sorry, I'm going to try to to uh, cut to close it fast. Um, so this is how I how facilitation re resonates in my mind. On the other hand, the animization was framed as Oh, like the cultural in agriculture has to be cultivated also, no? and uh, has to, we have to keep it going, keep the thing moving. But I was puzzled by this uh, in the end because uh, I think how the let's say the epistemology of dynamization was, uh, you know, like you had this, um, you kind of separated the cultural from the nature, from the environment in your slide of the last presentation. And uh, yeah, I was wondering whether in the end we we don't get uh, uh, reinforced dualism in facilitation versus dynamization. So in a way, how do we keep these two together? Hmm? To what extent are they the same? To what extent are they are they uh, juxtaposed? Juxtaposed. Okay. So I hope that was clear. Uh, if the speakers or others can react to this, I'd be if it makes sense to you, I'd be very glad. Thank you, Pietro. Thank you, Pietro. Maybe I can react. Very yes, quick answer. I think that there is no real opposition. I think it's maybe more of a um, linguistic question. Uh, I don't see any opposition between facilitation and dynamization, and uh, probably both terms refer to the same process. Uh, Danny can tell us a little bit more of why choosing dynamization. He before I remember in a in an email, he was naming it as a neologism, but probably useful. Um, of course, it uh, it refers to to, in, uh, to to produce a movement, you know, to 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 agitate in a positive way, and uh, and we could see the difference with facilitation, you know, because maybe the facilitator is taking always a sort of a little bit neutral passive role <laughs> and i think at the end here the agroecologist is is part of the process no the the role of participatory action research involves that the researcher becomes embedded in the whole question that is looking at and it's part of a process of self-recognition and mobilization so in some way i don't know if we could understand that um that there are slight difference between the terms but i don't see any real opposition in the use of them uh, regarding the slide I, I shared at the beginning, it is from Fischer Kowalski. Well, it's a, a couple of thinkers, and uh, and it's from the 90s, early 90s. That diagram uh, has been used often in uh, ec uh, ecological economy uh, analysis related with metabolism and so on. And it's true that it's not very fortunate to use the word nature. We don't use it that much in England as something separated from culture. But uh, that's why I think it would be more correct maybe to use biophysical grounds or if you want uh, 
the, the, the material, you know, ecological uh, aspects that sustain any, in this case, uh, our our civilization. And then, yes, there there shouldn't be, and it's not an opposition between culture and nature. And actually, agroecology shows that you know, uh, uh, the landscape, the peasant landscapes, are just these forms of coevolution between the environment and the and the and the the, the forms of consensus and and and, and uh, understanding that develop a, a peasant community that we could call culture. So it's like a a series of of processes of acquiring knowledge. Uh, a series of um, agreements, uh, productions uh, at, at all levels, from a form of craft to a song to a, to a landscape at the scale of a territory. So yeah, I don't think there is also intention to create a, a division there or a split. Mm. <clears throat> Thank you, Fernando. Um, we're almost at uh, 9 p.m. We will not go more than five minutes over time. Uh, Laura has the last question. Um, and maybe then we also still have the ecosystem services kind of question a little bit in the backlog, plus this other question about co-optation by public bodies. So maybe after Laura's question, we can give uh, each of you three speakers like one minute, two minutes to quickly say some rounding comments. And if you want to respond still to these um, ecosystem services and co-optation so on questions to quickly do it. Um, and um, we will close by five past, if that's okay. Laura. Perfect. Thank you, Manu. And um, I'm, I'm super honored to have this last uh, minute to raise this question, which it's also connecting with Fernan what Fernando was saying, and I think also resonates with what um, Pietro was asking. And it's about the, um, the cultural aspect of agroecology and the, the importance of working on that dimension. Um, because there is, I sense that there is always this um, kind of reaction from people that, um, and also internally in the agroecology movement, let's say, there's always this risk of having, of ex ex exercising some sort of cultural appropriation or to fall into this idea of, you know, the neo rural, how this is, this, uh, this subjectivity is connecting with the mystical. No, you, you mentioned about that. And with this transcendental uh, dimension, which is shifting the value system and shifting also the cultural hierarchies and the hegemonies that we have, you know, in these colonial processes that we are uh, like uh, traversed by. But it's interesting to because also this is a topic that Daniel covers in uh, in his writings, talking about the hy hybridization, you no, know, that colonial processes are not uh, are not fully finished. And there's always like these leftovers, and there's always this peasant, you no know, kind of ontological uh, um, aspect, and there there is not this pristine kind of uh, uh, subject that we need to we need to go back to. But there's always this reinventing, and but the, still there is this um, uh, I don't know. There's this uh, kind of sensible space or terrain. How neo rurality, how neo rurals, for example, engage with this? No, how do, do they react or we? I don't know. React to this, this um, um, esta queja, no? Como este señalamiento que se hace frecuentemente. Lel perro y flauta. The other day we were in the agroecology uh, congress and we were talking about the demographic uh, challenge, and someone was talking about this idea of. Instead of perro y flauta, burro y flauta, no? There's neo rurals coming in also uh, a very risky kind of colo co <laughs> uh, like colonial drive, even like there is this perception of we as urbans coming, going back to the land with a new set of values, with a new set of, you know, ideas. We are kind of imposing or reclaiming things that might not be from our, you know, there's this always this risk. So I just wanted to put this out and maybe for further reflections. Thank you, Laura. It feels like we could go on for a very long time. I think um, uh, people do have family responsibilities and maybe dinner plans and so on. So um, 
don't want to go too much. I think um, those two questions about public cooptation and um, uh, about ecosystem services and so on were a bit for for Eric and um, and Dani. Maybe I think maybe this last question could also be responded to by Fernando. If it's possible, can you just give us like two three sentences of like intuitive response to some of this and. Um, we're going to take all of this into the course with us also. Some of you we will see also in the course. Um, I think Dani we will see in the course and Fernando we will see in the course. So it's not the absolute end of the conversation. Um, can I pass on to you quickly, Dani, for like a quick wrap up? Yeah, I'll try. I will get uh, Laura's comment because I think it's really important. And, I, and we have been working in this issue. We, we are trying to um, publish a paper on what we have called politics of recognition. There's a conflict in agroecology. We need to, for, for, for promoting transitions, we need to recognize the other in front of us, the alterity of the other in front of us. And regarding conventional farmers, we have to recognize that me as urban, uh, white male, uh, with university studies, I have many privileges. And we in the agroecology and food sovereignty movements, we as urban activists, we have to recognize that uh, coming from urban societies is a privilege. And, and being uh, the rural nature of people, uh, the, the rural condition is a condition of sub subalternity in our society. And we need to recognize this as an axis of oppression. And when we talk with conventional farmers as left-wing progressive people, we have to recognize that we are talking on, well, we have to understand this is a, a intersectional, that there's, there are many axes of oppression all together, but this is one, and we have to recognize, otherwise this is uh, violence, and this is violence, even uh, when we as uh, urban people, we, we go to, and we have to recognize also that when we say to them, uh, you have to make transition, we are talking on their uh, money, their ability to send their children to the university if, if he wants or they want, it, that we are working with their profession, their, their way of living, no? And it's not the same as me as a, uh, an agroecology activist that I've got interesting ideas. And, and, and I think this is important to recognize this difference and, and who, which are the problems of the other that, that is in front of me. I, I'm, yeah, I, I'm saying this regarding neo-rurality and, and some some smell sometimes of superiority of urban people when we say we want to repopulate the countryside, we want to save the countryside. And well, there's many people, many things happening in the countryside before you went there. No, and I'm a neo-rural. I've been uh, 14 years living in villages, but I was born in Madrid and uh, I, I, I'm trying to recognize this problem. <laughs> Thank you, Danny. That was um, really good food for thought. Can I pass on to you, Eric? Yes, thank you. Super interesting discussion, actually, and I super agree with uh, Danny. I think um, in in the case of of Colcerola and and connecting with this part also of. Um, public cooptation or cooptation of the agroecological message. Uh, we have an internal and external discussion always um, about this. Um, sometimes when, uh, for example, with the contact agrari, which I was explaining, um, um, it's the public administrations who are like um, um, saying that they achieved this, they achieved that, and, 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 and with all this measure of, uh, message of agroecological transition, but at the same time, the other department of the same public administration is doing exactly the opposite. And, and but the message is there, right? And and often for uh, uh, farmers, for example, sometimes see us as as we are a part of the public administration, or or, or it's difficult to to like um, um, symbolize what we are really. 
so it's a very interesting question and a very also necessary discussion, I think, inside agroecology. And there are lots of people talking about this and Danny also was talking about this. I just wanted to say about the funding, uh, sorry, Rita, that you were asking about uh, the other part as well, but the reality is that it's part of the same thing. The funding of the um, services that we provide are inside of the contract that we have with all these um, 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 municipalities. And uh, as I said, the achievement that we made is that part of the budget of this uh, uh, funding that w is going to us and from the, um, the, the park is now uh, being interiorized by the park, which is uh, non-depending of uh, political parties, let's say. So it's a, a structural part of it. Um, I could go longer about funding, but I think it's enough. And I just wanted to add about this question that was floating there about um, the um, the abilities or the uh, the yeah the abilities about the facilitation that Danny was uh, saying that everyone can uh, facilitate or dynamize. I completely agree, but I just wanted to say three things that I think that are um, that will help you in this process, at least in 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 our experience. One of them is territorial connection. Um, sometimes we go to the places we try to dynamize or facilitate, but if you don't know where this farmer or this other farmer lives, um, you will have a hard time um, um, connecting with them at the start. Um, in my case, for example, Eric, I entered in Aranda Terra and, and Coachella two years ago, and one of the big things that the cooperative was uh, valuing from me is that I, I was born here. So I knew a lot of things about the, no, I knew the farmers, I, I, I mean, and that's a, a great thing. But at the same time, you have to be able to network with other movements outside of Colcerola, because this is part of the key of facilitating. Uh, farmers need uh, things that are not always inside from Colcerola. They need to connect with other movements. They need to connect with other farmers. And it's a, a great ability or knowledge to have to connect when with these, with these uh, initiatives. And at last, the facilitation abilities. Sometimes you end up with a table with one politician, one farmer, and one um, 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 people from social movements, and you have to reach an, not an agreement, but, but try to facilitate the space. And it's not, and it, sometimes it's not easy. And that's it. Eric, um, wise words at the end here. Fernando, do you still want to add something? Or it's you? Um, uh, we will have the chance to speak to you more. This is super exciting that we will. I'm also thinking now we should take this with us and maybe we can make a breakout group in the course about this and work about this more. And anybody who wants those materials, we will write the notes and kind of share the debates that happen so others can also follow up on it. Um, links are being shared. Thank you so much for being with us today. Um, thanks for sharing your knowledge and practices. And um, thanks, Maggie, again for the translation. Join us again on the 9th of March um, to kind of hear how this course went in some sense. Um, and um, yeah, um, we'll be in touch with so many of you. So thanks a lot, Eric, Fernando, Dani, Maggie, and all of you for coming. Good night. Muchas gracias.